What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today, and we're pumped to be chatting with Omar from Po Boys Diesel. He's a 7.3 liter Power Stroke owner, and he's got a really cool build in the works, where this is going to be a drag truck. And we're going to talk to him about the truck itself, what he's doing with the engine, transmission, turbo, what his plans and goals are you know, for it. And it's, it's really cool to talk to him because he has a YouTube channel. He's always posting videos. And you can see not just the assembly of it, but the disassembly of the truck. Going through the body, the chassis, the engine, the transmission, the turbo. Tons of different things he has planned he shows you guys. So if you're a 7.3 fan or you just love diesel performance in general, make sure you go to Po Boys Diesel on YouTube. Check him out. We're going to get to our talk here in just a minute, but before we do, I want to thank two of our sponsors for making episodes like this possible. First is PPI, and those guys are hard at work on the L5P. Custom tuning is just right around the corner, so for our Duramax fans listening, the wait is over. You guys are making, uh, or have the ability to make some crazy power on a stock truck, so you're going to make the Ford and the, uh, the Ram guys jealous. But make sure and go to PPI.com, check out custom tuning options for your Duramax, Cummins, or Power Stroke. They've got it all. And the Titan with the 5 liter, they've been hard at work on that, and the 3 liter and the F-150. I also want to thank Diesel World Magazine. They've been a long time sponsor and supporter of the podcast. We can't thank those guys enough for having our, our podcast be streamed on their site. All the help that they give us and insights and things like that. Make sure and go to dieselworldmag.com, bookmark it. If you want to see pictures from races, builds, new product information, interviews with the manufacturers, tons of different things. They got it all. They update it weekly. Make sure you bookmark that page and head on over to it. All right, guys, let's get to the 7.3 liter build talk with Omar. This is Corey Willis with PPI, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, I'm Clint Cannon from ATS. This is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Dimitri from No Zone Diesel. I'm Cass from Diesel Doctor of Tennessee, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. Omar, welcome to the Diesel Podcast, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we've been following you on social media for a while, and you've got a really cool... 7.3 Power Stroke build, and we've been seeing what you're doing. We wanted to, to talk with you on the podcast and learn more about you and your passion for diesels, what you're building, and deliver it to our Power Stroke fans out there. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hey, take us take us to the beginning of, of what, uh, what piqued your interest in diesel, and especially with the 7.3 Power Stroke. All right. Well, basically, what really piqued my interest in the diesel world was actually aircraft. Um, I, I have a little bit of knowledge there uh, when it comes to uh, aeronautics and avionics engineering. And, uh, you know, it took me back to, uh, you know, falling in love with those 1920s and 1930 aircraft that were using diesel engines. And, you know, how since the fact that it was barely used, you know, they didn't do it for long, um, it kind of Grew me in a little bit uh, more due to the fact that I'm that I'm that guy that likes to be the underdog, you know, see those uh, things that not everybody's doing, and let's do something with it. So that's basically what drew me in. Uh, and the seven three platform itself has uh, its own uh, reason. Uh, number one being that I fell in love with the truck when I first saw them come out in uh, 1994. Uh, Towards the end of 1994, the 7.3 came out, and I remember seeing my very first uh, dually four-door long bed, and to me that was a gorgeous truck, and I always stayed in love with it. Obviously, I was a little bit younger and didn't have the <laughs> the resources to uh, <laughs> to acquire one, and uh, you know, I, it, it was always my dream. I kept up with it, and uh, always looking at them and watching people build them, and Eventually, finally, the the time came where I was able to get one, and man, then that's, that's where it all went snowballing because I I started uh, putting in money and loving it more and more, and I just couldn't stop, and I just totally mesmerized by it. <laughs> I think w what you mentioned there about being the underdog, I think that's a big underlying part of why we're all into diesels, yeah, because they're not they're not the most common thing on the road. But there's so much passion that we have for them, no matter the brand, is, you know, that different colored handle at the pump and and just the torque and how the motors are designed and built for higher mileage and they can go so far and 
all that stuff. And I think no matter who's listening, if they're a Power Stroke fan or Cummins or Duramax, that's why we're all in this is because we have that passion for being an underdog, having what not everyone else drives. And that's that's a really cool part of, I think, what ties all of us together in, in diesel. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the research and development for uh, diesel, uh, I want to say the last 10 years, this last decade, has been, uh, I want to call it a pinnacle because uh, a lot of new stuff has come out. And uh, it's now when we're actually getting started on doing the what was thought to be unaccomplishable. And that just puts more wood in the fire for me. I mean, it just keeps on pumping me up and, you know, eventually bringing us to levels that are uh, somewhat comparable to uh, gas engines. And, and, you know, that, that also leaves a lot of people in an absolute awe, you know, and that's just amazing to me. It's awesome. Well, it was like not long ago with the the No Mercy Nine racing, where Ryan Milliken took his his car out as Nova, and he's racing, you know, gas cars, nitrous cars with, you know, a Cummins based engine, and it's uh, the power, you know, like we see with Ultimate Call Out Challenge, and and even what you know guys are able to do with Diesel Power Challenge, where you've got thousand to 13 1400 horsepower trucks where not long ago it was like you can't do that you can't make 2000 horsepower you can't make 2500 horsepower you can't you know do do fours in the eighth mile absolutely yeah it's it's caught a lot of people by surprise you know and that's uh that makes it more fun for us you know what i mean it's just one of those things that keeps on making us uh stand out a little bit more and that's absolutely what the diesel community needs you know um to the fact that you know, since we are, like I say, the underdogs still in the in the game, uh, there's not a lot of uh, uh, let's say it's not as big as a uh, gas competitions and you know the amount of parts available for gas engines and this is bringing that extra umph that these companies that do research and development uh, could you know start stepping into the diesel world and and start pumping out some more new stuff with, you know, tons of research and, you know, it's, it's just growing and I I don't see it stopping for a while. I think it's going to, going to be one of those things that are going to last a long time. And I mean, what can I say? Everybody loves to see that coal roll. And (laughs) at the end of the day, it's torque that wins races. You know what I mean? Not, not really the, the, the horsepower just sell things. It's just the way I say it. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many, how many power strokes do you have? Currently, right now, I have three of them. Um, uh, they're all three OBSs that I personally own. Uh, one of them, which is the fourth one actually, but it's, it's not, that one's a gasser. Um, but yeah, I got three 7.3 power strokes. Uh, all of them OBS and, uh, I had a Super Duty, uh, um, I believe I had uh, shown you a picture of that one. It's a black one. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be uh, my fourth one when it comes to the Super Duty. I mean, to the 7.3 platforms. Now, the daily driver, that's the, you have a white four-door dually. Correct. Now, is that one, is it modified at all or is it is it all stock or? Well, that's basically where it all started. Um, I did modify it when I first got it. You know, I started tinkering with a little exhaust, a little ship, a little this and that, and uh, it snowballed and ended up being a 718 horsepower dually, 10,000 wow. pounds rolling down the street. <laughs> so that's when I kind of put a halt to it and say, hold on a second, I got 10,000 pounds behind all this power. I'm going to be breaking a lot of stuff soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's where the birth of uh, the new project uh, came from. Uh, to, to do a lighter vehicle and, uh, you know, I'm pairing up with, uh, very good, uh, people that are working along my side and, uh, are very enthused and support the channel big time as well. That's what I wanted to ask you next is to tell us about the truck and then also your YouTube channel and how you show what you're doing. Like almost, I think a couple times a week, sometimes multiple times a week, you're always keeping your subscribers updated on, on YouTube and social media, but yeah, take us to the platform, what your goals are with this, this project truck. And Yeah, definitely. Well, the goals are on that project truck is uh, basically I'm trying to reach the fantastic mystical thousand horsepower that everybody loves. Um, it's uh, it is achievable with the seven three has been done uh, multiple times and uh, our main uh, engine builder who's uh, working along with us, uh, which you interviewed, uh, 
Brian uh, Gray from Gray's Diesel Performance uh, is uh, blueprinting and doing all the, you know, the little knickknacks alongside me. And we plan on getting that done, you know, getting the 1,000 horsepower. And, well, obviously we're going to be doing a lot of weight savings uh, uh, to try to make the best possible with what we have. That's uh, why, uh, I don't know if you, well, yeah, you, you actually saw the last video, and that's where I started doing some of my own parts there. That uh, It's an interesting journey on that part there. With the truck itself, are you going to be drag racing it? Absolutely, absolutely. I've been drag racing since I was uh, around 14 years old, and I love it. I absolutely love it, and uh, I continue doing it till the day that, hey, <laughs> I'm called. <laughs> <laughs> that's what got me hooked on on the performance side of diesel was this, i went to the drag strip and it's like the first time i remember being nervous and then about halfway through the run i'm like i'm hooked and it was just it was done after that <laughs> telling you man it's one of those uh moments that it's kind of bittersweet it's like great i've done it and then you're like Oh God! Now I'm going to spend a lot of money <laughs> to keep it going. <laughs> but it's just lovely. It's amazing. It's fun. You know, the the racing community is uh, small in itself, but the diesel racing community is even smaller, which makes us a whole lot more. Uh, we all know each other, basically. You know, you get to know everybody, and uh, it becomes like a big, great family. And it, it just makes it funner and you know a lot of people talking back and forward and you get the hype and you know, it just makes it amazing what's so cool is like with social media and podcasts and youtube is we don't even need to live close to each other to know how somebody did at a race what they changed on their setup um if somebody he just you know ran a new time or what they're doing so it's it, it gets rid of the distance so we can all keep up on the performance side of it Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so amazing. I mean, you got people from Kentucky, you got people from Colorado, you got people like myself in Florida, all parts of even the world, you know, and you get to see it uh, right at the fingertips of your computer, you know, or cell phone. And uh, that definitely brings the world together when it comes to, you know, learning and seeing what's being accomplished where and what they're using and what their setups are. It's, it's great. It's really cool. Social media is definitely a great avenue to, uh, you know, network, let's say it that way. And I know when I, when I watch your videos or, or see on Instagram in the truck is I think, okay, how are you going to get to a thousand horse? Are you going to do it? Are you thinking, and I'm not sure if you've got to this, this stage of the build, but big single, you know, nitrous, is it going to be compound turbocharged? What are, what are you thinking on the, the air side of, of the equation? All right. Well, I, I absolutely taunted myself for a little while thinking about going triple or compound. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Um, but then I started thinking, you know, with the weight savings and stuff, I don't want to have too much weight on the nose of the vehicle. Um, so I'm definitely going to go with a setup with a big turbo, just a single big turbo and uh, nitrous, definitely. Got to have the Smurf juice. Nice. I love big singles. I know we've talked about that on the podcast before is like big single or compounds. And it's just, I like the single. I know that they both have benefits and, you know, maybe some cons, but just the way they come on, the way it hits, the way it feels, especially at the track, is just, it's exciting. It is. It's insane. I mean, the, the hit is just, it's one of those things that you, I, I compare it kind of like when you do a, uh, pilot testing, you know, with the G forces, and you get that sudden hit, and you're just like, "Wow, what was that? I love it. Let's do it again." <laughs> it's just a roller coaster ride every time. <laughs> it's amazing. It's fun, and uh, that's that's basically, you know, one of the also, like I said, the reasons uh, for going big single. Also, is you know the weight. You know, every every turbo you're adding another forty, fifty, sixty pounds, depending on the size uh, on the nose of the vehicle, and you know, you kind of want to distribute that way uh, as as best as you can. On the transmission setup, are you going to you gonna stick with an E4OD, or, or what's your plans on the, the transmission? Well, no, definitely definitely not sticking with the E4OD. Um, I, I do have an E4OD uh, that is uh, completely built um, on the dually, uh, which is holding up really nice. However, you know, with these uh, power levels and what we expect to uh, do to the truck. I'm definitely going to be doing a transmission swap uh, that has been 
well tested and proven to work uh, when it comes to these trucks, um, which is the TH400 uh, platform uh, off oh, of cool. Chevrolet. Yeah. Uh, something that uh, is on the works, and uh, we're uh, definitely doing all the research and all the good stuff to make sure that it holds up to, you know, the, the massive amounts of torque that we produce with diesel. That's going to be sweet. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome an awesome drag truck that you got with with that kind of setup. And it, it, it's so cool to hear about your build because you, you, you've you gone into it with a very specific goal of what you want to do. Whereas a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this as well, is I'm, you know, it starts with a programmer and then the programmer turns into a lift pump and then I run out of air and I need a turbo. And then I didn't really have a goal at the beginning and I spent money where I didn't need didn't to spend really it. Need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, and then that's the, definitely. <laughs> it's definitely something that we uh, a lot of people go through uh, starting off with the you know with tinkering. I mean I, I'm guilty of that too. That's how it started with the dueling, you know, and ended up putting a chip and and uh, uh, cold air intake and an exhaust, which is what's known as the the basic mag- magical three. So, but um, it just uh, kept on snowballing. Wait, I ran out of this now. I need this, and oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Then yeah, when Brian Gray was on, we were talking about his drag truck. It got me really excited, and it, it does because I'm a diesel enthusiast first. And to see what some of these platforms, you know, or some of these engines that people said, well, you can't make power with it. You can't go fast with that. You gotta, you, you have to go get a Dodge Commons. You have to go get this Duramax. Um, you have to get this six four Power Stroke. It's not true, and it's so cool to see it because there's this new technology and these, these people who are experts in their field are taking that knowledge and saying, let's take this platform and let's go really fast with it. And they do it. So is your goal to beat Brian Gray at the track? <laughs> Never. <laughs> that's my friend. That's my buddy. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, Brian Gray is such a pro. He's such a professional person when it comes to business as well. Uh, to the point that he has no problem, uh, building an engine or a truck faster than his. However, you know, myself, uh, with the goals that I also have set for my, uh, for the YouTube channel, uh, you know, I don't really want to get to that point where I'm just basically having a boat, you know, where I'm putting in another thousand dollars every time I run. So, you know, I, it, it, is it possible to be done? It might. I don't know. I mean, the, the, Brian is, is excellent with you know, the kind of stuff that he does. He's one of those, uh, I want to call him pioneers when it comes to the research and development, when it comes to these engines, this platform. And uh, as you said, you know, uh, a lot of people thought that the old dinosaur engine uh, wouldn't go anywhere, but um, you got, you know, Brian Gray, obviously. You got Brian Jellick. You got uh, Dan Kropinek over there in Canada. You got Stephen Davis. You got, obviously, Swamp Diesel. And even one of our uh, channel supporters, uh, Stroker Diesel, they, they also do 7.3s and have uh, accomplished a lot of nice goals with that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just magical in my in my mind, you know, just thinking, wow, all these people are now getting to do all this stuff. And, uh, you know, it's hurting feelings for a lot of people, you know, mm-hmm. people who uh, gave up on the platform itself. Um but back to uh, Brian Gray, I mean, this guy is one of a kind. Let me tell you, he has a, an amazing work ethic. He has such a professionalism when it comes to what he does and how he does it. And, you know, definitely one person that I absolutely look up to. I, I'm a great fan of his. Definitely I am. You had mentioned YouTube, and, and I definitely wanted to chat with you about that. Is What inspired you to do a YouTube channel to show your build? Well, basically, uh, with the YouTube thing, it all started, one, for the passion that I have, because I'm, I'm a gearhead. Uh, number two is the fact that I always wanted to be able to help others, um, you know, whether it is through a YouTube type of uh, how-to video or basically just inspire and uh, motivate other people to get out there and do something, you know, for their cars, their trucks, whatever it is, and, you know, show them that. Anything you set your mind to, you can accomplish the proper planning and, you know, dedication. And to me, that's, I don't know, I, I'm call me a, a, what do you call it, a, a daisy for this, but 
I'm the type of person that believes that everybody deserves to try something in their lives and definitely succeed at least doing something once. You know what I mean? Take that chance. Give it a try. Give it a go. And, you know, nowadays you see a lot of uh, people, uh, especially our, our youth, you know, they're, they're all stuck at home, stuck to their uh, gaming units and stuff, and they don't get out there and make uh, real friends, you know, and, and hang out and spend some time with their buddies building a car like it used to be back then. And I think that's something that has been starting to get lost in the uh, what is an automotive world? And, you know, I kind of want to motiv motivate them to get out there, get to wrench and, you know, make some mistakes, learn from them, and have fun at it. <laughs> so that's basically the, the, the mist of uh, my channel. And obviously to continue growing the diesel community, um, which, like I said, you know, it, it's going to benefit a lot of people, a lot of racers, a lot of uh, uh, farmers, a lot of people who are in the – parts uh, sales and all that stuff. So by growing the, the diesel community, a lot more doors open in the whole area and the whole subject of diesel. That, that's so true. Like I was, when you're telling me about YouTube is like, that's, it's something I do is if I don't know how to do something or I want to see, Hey, has this been done or who's doing this? I, I go to YouTube first and I type it in and Absolutely. I could read about it on, on an article somewhere or, I can watch it or even listen. And, and I think being able, you know, in this age, we all have smartphones and we're all connected to them and our email and our bank accounts, everything's on our phone is we, we do kind of lose that. Hey, you know, get your buddies together and we're going to work on a, a, a truck and do some stuff. It, it might be hard, but with something like YouTube is, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm watching a truck video at two in the morning or, you know, eight in the morning or something like that. We can do it when, when it's convenient for us and still kind of see, all right, I just saw, you know, you, you put this turbo kit on or doing this with a transmission. Maybe I want to do that to my truck. You know, I think I can do that and inspire people. And then also the growing diesel motorsports, which is a huge theme on our podcast is being able to get more people, especially the younger generation into them and passionate about them and wanting to do stuff to them, whether it's drag racing, sled pulling, just making a little bit more power, making them look cool, whatever it might be. Definitely. It's, it's one of those things that I, I live by and, and I know you guys do as well because I'm, you know, it, it's, it's just something that still needs to continue growing. We, we can't put a stop to it. We need to just keep on marching forward. And like you said, you know, this is my way of uh, motivating others as well as you guys do. And, you know, giving them little tips, tricks, and how-tos so that way they can get out in the garage, do a little something. And, you know, when it comes to growing the, the channel, you know what I would really love to see is in the gas world you see uh, these junior dragsters. Eventually there's going to be somebody who's going to do one of those dragsters, and, and, and that's going to be amazing, a, a junior dragster with a diesel. Come on, how cool would that be? That so would that's going to cool. keep on – oh, yeah, man. <laughs> That's just one of those things that I'm looking forward to seeing it, definitely. So it's, uh, it's, it's, that's the good thing about being on that part of the, of the, of the spot we're on when it comes to diesel. It's growing, so we get to see all that progress happen, you know, in our time. It's not like, uh, when you talk gas engines and all that stuff, you're like, Oh, yeah, that was done about 30 years ago or 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> and you're like, I didn't get to see that. <laughs> so you get to live it. <laughs> what, what's so cool, too, is like I think back to when I got into diesel and I'd go on YouTube. And I didn't search all of YouTube, but most of the things I'd find would be like, here's my cold start or here's the sound of my, you know, my five-inch straight pipe. And there were a lot of videos like that. But now there's so much more where you can watch turbo kit compound turbo kit be put on you can watch an engine build series you can watch what you're doing with a complete drag truck build from the ground up and definitely see that definitely and and that's that's another uh uh thing that you know uh, some of our youtubers uh are doing and and uh that's a great thing because like i said it keeps them the our viewers motivated and people like you know uh greg alborella which you had in the show as well 
Um, he's done quite a few builds also on the on the YouTube platform, and you know, I think it's uh, one of those things that people can sit down, kind of watch it as a take it as a series, and learn from it, feed from it, and then put it into work. You know, they're like, you know, if this person could do it, I can do it. Let me start getting my hands dirty. Let me go out there. Let me give it a shot. And, you know, I just live for that moment to see, you know, people being able to accomplish their, their goals, their dreams, you know, when it comes to their vehicles. And like you said, you know, it doesn't matter what type of uh, brand itself or or uh, what uh, type of build they're doing. I don't care if it's a SEMA build. I don't care if it's a drag build. I don't care if it's a street build. I don't care if you're building your tractor for the back, you know, for the <laughs> for your farm. Just get out there, do something, enjoy it, have fun. And, yes, you're going to find it all basically on YouTube. You'll be able to look up a lot of things. You know what? I still do it. I may not, I mean, I may know a little bit about the cars and stuff, but when it comes to uh, woodworking, let's say, I'm not really all there. So I'll look it up on YouTube and do my own stuff just by looking at that, you know, and motivate myself, feel energized enough to say, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. If I fail, well, I'll sleep in the doghouse for a little bit, but <laughs> I'll give it another go. <laughs> That's what's so cool. And, and like, there are different platforms. Like, we have a YouTube channel, but we, we don't have videos. We have the audio from a podcast. Right. And, like, you guys got the videos, but when I watch, say, your video, I feel like I'm in Florida. And yeah. I'm watching what you're doing that day on the truck, or I watch a Greg Alvarilla video, and it's like I'm watching him you know, put a, a, a lift kit on or a, an intake manifold or I'm watching him in North Carolina or Ohio or wherever he is doing something. So I feel like I'm there. And we try to do that with the podcast where we have, you know, say Clint Cannon from ATS, where we're going to talk to him for an hour, which can, can be really hard to do at an event or Brian Roth from BD Diesel or Corey Willis from PPI. And we just, we take the audio side of it. But I think with what we both do, we're able to reach the diesel fans out there or people that are just kind of interested in it and find us randomly. And Damn. say, hey, watch this build, or hey, listen to this new technology with all this emission systems on, and these trucks are making 550 horsepower, and they're still reliable, and they still meet all these guidelines, and and, and just reach the new uh, the new diesel enthusiast. Definitely, definitely, it's one of those things. I'm telling you, it's, uh, I mean, don't don't get us wrong for all our, our listeners and viewers. It, it does take a lot of work to do what we do. It may seem like a I don't know, a 10-minute video or, or a half-an-hour podcast, but it does take a lot of research. It does take a lot of time, and it does take a lot of effort uh, to get all these things done. But we do it gladly with all our love to make sure that you guys get something that you all benefit from and have fun, you know, and, and uh, motivate you to do your own builds and, and just have fun with it. You know, that's why we're here. We're always trying to do all that kind of stuff for you guys, and uh, we love doing it. That's what keeps it going. and. Uh, you know, we, we really appreciate everybody who listens to us and, and views us, and and it's because of that that motivates us to continue doing more and more. And uh, that is going to just continue growing. You know, it's going to continue growing more and more uh, uh, people doing new builds, and, and we get to see all those builds being done. And it's just an amazing journey, and I believe that our goals, at least uh, for, for you guys at the Diesel Podcast, and myself and our other YouTubers as well, is to be able to reach as many people as we can so that they also get the opportunity to, one, be entertained, two, learn something, and three, put it into effect. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. You got me pumped up to do more podcasts now. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> How do our listeners find your YouTube channel? What do they search for? Uh, the, well, they can find me directly at Pole Boys Diesel. Um, they could find it there uh, directly also for uh, our uh, Instagram, uh, Pull Boys Diesel, and Twitter at Pull Boys Diesel as well. Um, we have uh, a website also, which is www.pullboysdiesel.com. So it's all Pull Boys Diesel. <laughs> it's real simple nice. to get there. And uh, <laughs> we look forward to seeing all of you there visiting. And, hey, you know, let's have fun. Let's continue this build. Let's uh, – Make the world change. Let's put a lot of faces in awe. <laughs> When's your goal to take the, uh, the drag truck on its first maiden voyage, so to speak? Well, the first maiden voyage is uh, something that uh, is, is 
I'm looking, hopefully, you know, being optimistic to see if we could do it by the end of uh, 2019. Um, due to the fact that the progress is, you know, is being built little by little and, and uh, we're counting on a lot of uh, parts that we, we need to get and, it, you know, you know how it goes. It's a lot of money to be invested into it, but uh, we want to make sure that we film it all and we could bring the people as uh, neat and as precise content so that they could, you know, benefit from the videos. That's why I'm I'm not doing it in such a big, fast mode rush and all that good stuff, but uh, I do uh, a lot of filming. I'll tell you that much. I do a lot of filming, and sometimes it's five, six, seven, eight hours of filming ends up being a 10, 15-minute video, <laughs> but uh, it, it does take a lot of uh, I'm sorry, it does consume a lot of time to do, and I'm willing to, to pay that, that length of time just to make sure that we put out content that is beneficial for everybody and not skip any parts of it. What's so cool is, is I love builds like that. There's a, uh, a guy on Instagram I've been following for probably two or two and a half years, and he started with a restoration of his second-gen 12 valve. And every couple days he posts something and sometimes he just put on a new boot sometimes he painted the frame sometimes he's putting new carpet in it but it's been two or two and a half years and so like now it's at the point that it's going to be ready soon and I'm excited because I've been following it for two or two and a yes. half years and it's cool to see it's like wow I remember when it was you know the body and the bed were just taken off of it and now it's going back on and there's fresh paint and glass and everything and it's that's a really cool side of it that I know our listeners and you know, when they go check out your, your channel and your pages are really going to like to see the progress, whether it's a huge jump, a small jump, if it's something with the transmission or the engine or the body, that, that's how we get kind of emotionally invested in the build and follow it. So we'll make sure next year we chat with you when, you know, after you take it out, let us know how it does and, and kind of recap, you know, what happened from the time of this podcast to the next one. And, and maybe some things you learned and some new new uh, you know stuff you might have done with the truck that uh, you know you learned along the way like hey I had this plan but this came up and it's worked better for me and I want to tell all you guys out there if you're gonna do this you know here's here's what I learned through it absolutely I'm definitely gonna be uh, looking forward to uh, being on again and uh, with, with your channel uh, with the podcast and uh, definitely uh, I will be like I say I, I post everything. I'm very open. I like for everybody to see. And uh, one of the coolest things is, well, you know, YouTube is uh, the way we have it nowadays. is kind of like a reality show where you get to see the ups and downs of the whole process. And uh, that is real life. You know, that's what people want to see. They want to know that it's not all peaches and cream. <laughs> you know, there's uh, hard moments. There's easy moments, fun moments. Even, you know, you, get, you might get hurt or whatever it is. But... That's, uh, that's the, 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 what do you call it, the juice, the, the, the mm -hmm. pulp of the whole uh, YouTube thing and being able to do a, 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 a podcast or whatever it is, explaining step by step of it. And people love it. You know, people like that. They appreciate it because they're not being fooled by uh, here he is painting his truck outdoors and not a bug got on it. No, <laughs> you know, there's always <laughs> something that happens. And we want to be able to show that to our viewers, and uh, I think they will definitely appreciate that, that you're being honest to them and as open as you can. They feel more at home. They feel like family. They feel like they know you, and that's our goal, you know, get them to feel that way because at the end of the day, we're all one big community, and we're all trying to achieve one goal. Let's rock and roll together, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the, the time-lapse videos, and I'll see them on YouTube sometimes of, like, It'd be a truck build, car build, engine build, and it's like probably weeks or months that are condensed into this video. I'm like, this build did not go this smooth. There were, you know, there was a part that wasn't got lost by some freight carrier or something didn't fit and had to be modified. I'm like, I want to see that because it could happen. It probably Absolutely. does happen. Absolutely. And how do you handle it? What do you do? Like, you know, this part's supposed to fit, but it doesn't because you gotta you gotta change something. Like, I want to see that. Absolutely. It's like, like now, like this whole back, uh, let's say, month and a half with all the rain here, as you saw in the video, um, you know, 
that puts us that on on our time frame and but this is reality and and this is what we also use as a motivating tool to let them know hey just because it rained on you just because this got washed away or it messed up don't give up keep on going keep on trying you know and that's that's the essence that's the essence of doing it this way little by little showing everything making it real man i'm telling you if you keep it real people will really appreciate it yeah that's kind of a, a void i think not just in in diesel but i'd say in motorsports in general is we kind of you know as a society want information real quick to the point we can't spend a lot of time on it there's so much going on mm -hmm. but if you inspire someone and they think that's how it's going to go then they're caught off guard when you have you know the package is lost and you needed this part to go to the race and then they get discouraged and they're like i don't want to do this this is, this is not anything like i've heard or seen or read about and it's not how it goes and i think you know especially with with motorsports I, I can lump gas in it diesel whatever it might be is builds like yours um like other ones we've covered is it's almost it's kind of how business goes it's how life goes it's not everything goes perfect not everything's you know you can have the plan but you got to adapt you got to do these things and i think that's you know another reason why we're also into diesel motorsports as well as it, it, it can teach you a lot and i hope with the younger generation and and people watching you and your videos is if you build a truck or you build a car or anything, you put something together, it's going to teach you a lot, um, you know, about life, about success, failure, how to adapt, overcome all those things. And, and, um, yeah, that's what I like seeing about like your channel is you show everything. So it, it's not like I have this, you know, kind of sugar coated quick little video where everything went perfect. <laughs> you know, I saw, it rained today. Uh, this part, you know, I've got to modify this or I didn't think this was going to be here. How am I going to, what am I going to do here? You know, it's, it's really cool. Exactly. And, and, and like you said, you know, this is one of those challenges that has recently happened to me and I've been able to project it through the video. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do that full fiberglass, uh, front clip, uh, done at home, teach others to do it. So that way they save themselves some money on the process. But you know what? The rain got me, I don't know, maybe five, two, three, four times uh, so far. And I've had to redo certain little bits of it. And that's the reality, and that's what we forget. That's what we want them to know. So they know either to take certain precautions. If they have a, a place to be under, you know, hey, try that instead. Uh, so that way they're covered from the elements. If you don't, you can still do it. Stay motivated. Continue trying. Don't give up. That's the message, you know, and... and that's what we like to predict, and we want to make sure that everybody stays positive. And, you know, one thing that I uh, didn't mention before is that I am Ford Blue at heart, <laughs> but <laughs> I do plan on doing in the future some, you know, Duramax builds, Cummings builds uh, also to, you know, bring a little something for each person. You know, I don't want to stay uh, just up on, on one brand when there's so many other people that, may need a little advice, may need a little help or a little motivation to do their Chevrolet or their Dodge or their Ram, you know what I mean? I want to make sure I cover all those bases, be kind of neutral, non-biased when it comes to that. I see you say that now, but once you start that Cummins build, you might get bit by the uh, six in a row make you go thing and you I might be able to turn you into a Cummins guy, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, 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 I love them. I, I, don't get me wrong, I have my chair of them too, you know, and, and they're nice as well, you know. I I, I, I think it was a uh, 1993 that we had, a 1993 5.9. And, you know, that thing was just unstoppable. It is, they're great platforms, and they're proven, and definitely something that I look forward to playing, tinkering with uh, on the channel, which is a great thing. And like I said, also, even though the, you know, Duramax, you know, I plan on doing some of that too. You know, have some fun at it and be able to share with everybody. You know, I really want to make sure that we reach everybody and have a little something for them. And uh, stuff also like, like the fiberglass thing, that doesn't just apply to diesel. It applies to all types of motorsports or even uh, people who are, might be considering doing a car kit or something like that. Hey. With this, these last couple videos, they're going to be able to learn stuff like that. And, you know, it's one of those things that uh, 
I don't know, in the clothing world, you would say unisex or whatever. <laughs> this one is all brands, basically. It doesn't matter what brand you got, you can apply that kind of stuff on there. So, and we try to reach as much as we can, so that way everybody has a little something to uh, gain from it. Yeah, man. Well, I, I appreciate what you're doing. We subscribe to you. Encourage our listeners to to go on YouTube, subscribe, watch your videos, see what you're building, and, and pay attention to it over the next year or so, and see, you know, how it goes from, you know, a chassis to going down the drag strip. So, I mean, we appreciate your time today, what you're doing for the diesel community, and I look forward to chatting with you next year. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll I will have seen how it came together, but hearing what 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 you think from you know this point to that point and some things that you learned along the way and get you back on the podcast and and uh you know share those lessons with our listeners absolutely and i really want to appreciate you for uh you know having me on here this is a great opportunity to get out there and say hello to everybody and uh like i always say uh you've noticed in our videos we uh always uh stay in tune with the diesel podcast and we always recommend it because through this is where a lot of people gather a lot of information, learn little tidbits, and uh, then they could apply it to themselves and have fun at it. So I want to thank you and uh, let the coal roll. <laughs> Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to ppi.com. You're looking for custom tuning for any common rail truck, they've got it. And also Diesel World Mag. Go to dieselworldmag.com. You can check out anything that's happening in diesel those guys are on it there's pictures there's tons of information behind the scenes stuff that you may not see on social media they've got it if you are on facebook and instagram make sure you follow them they post pictures and videos all the time even with events that are coming up so if you want to catch a few before the season's over they've got them till next time keep the shiny side up